In this video we are going to talk about a source of anterior knee pain that is often overlooked. The infrapatellar fat pad syndrome, also known as Hoffa syndrome. Enroll in our online course now. Link is in the video description. Hi and welcome back to PhysioTutors. The infrapatellar fat pad is an intracapsular and extrasynovial adipose tissue occupying the anterior knee joint. It is bordered anteriorly by the patellar tendon and the joint capsule, superiorly by the inferior pole of the patella, inferiorly by the proximal tibia and the deep infrapatellar bursa, and posteriorly by the joint synovium. As it is highly vascularized and innervated, impingement of the infrapatellar fat pad is a potential source of nociception, causing anterior knee pain that is often overlooked. Biomechanically, the fat pad is a mobile structure that can help to stabilize the patella and the patella tendon and prevents pinching of the synovial membrane. In 1904, Hoffa was the first to describe an isolated impingement of the fat pad as an inflammatory hypertrophy and hyperplasia of the adipose tissue, characterized by fibrosis and calcifications. These changes can either result from trauma as well as chronic repetitions like experienced in regular sporting activities. Patients with Hoffa syndrome present with burning or aching anterior knee pain with variable duration of symptoms from weeks to even years. Oftentimes swelling on both sides of the patella is observed even in the absence of arthritis. On physical examination, pain and tenderness around the patella tendon, usually near the inferior pole of the patella, is one of the hallmark signs of the pathology. Range of motion is limited to some extent, with most studies reporting pain at the end range of extension. Pain is then also often aggravated by full extension and dynamic extension such as during stair climbing or a prolonged period of flexion. A test that can be used to diagnose the syndrome is the Hoffa's test, which you can watch by a click in the top right corner. Similar to other body regions and pathologies, there's only a weak association between abnormalities seen on imaging techniques and clinically diagnosed fat pad syndrome. Therefore, the diagnosis should not only be based on medical imaging, but is rather a clinical diagnosis. Although successful management is reported with physiotherapy treatment, there's only anecdotal evidence from case studies that support different approaches. Recommendations then range from closed chain quadriceps exercises and gluteus medius training to bracing and stretching. Initially, it is recommended to desensitize the sensitive fat pad, which can be achieved by avoidance of hyperextension, for example, by making sure the knees are not in a locked back position during standing, icing and taping. In case conservative therapy fails, patients may benefit from surgical fat pad resection. All right, this was our video on the infrapatellar fat pad syndrome. If you want to learn how to distinguish it from other pathologies that can cause anterior knee pain, click on the video right next to me. Do you want to learn about screening, diagnosis and treatment of the most common pathologies in the lower and upper extremities? Check out our online course on study.physiotutors.com. This was Kai for PhysioTutors. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.